Hello, everybody, and welcome to Enterprise Sales Development. I'm Eric Quanstrom, CMO at Science. Fun one today. We had an interview with Jax Liu, and Jax is kind of a, a man of many different talents where he's been in the SDR space from a lot of different angles. He's got his own podcast, one you should definitely check out, um, where he cracks into a lot of SDR issues, just like this podcast. Um, as a matter of fact, he was an account executive at 10 bound leading sales development consultancy, um, led biz dev teams at, and was director of sales and acquisition at better growth an outsourced lead gen firm. And we go into a number of different and frankly, insightful topics around, um, what it takes to succeed in this industry, some failure points that he's experienced and learned from, you're going to want to listen for those. And then he gives a great enterprise playbook for penetrating super big or what he calls fat opportunities that's almost foolproof. Stay tuned. Listen for it. Let's get started right now. So my name is Jax. I'm a sales development strategist with uh, four years of sales experience. I uh, started at a company called Berg Street Systems um, way long ago, back in 2018. And Working for them it was great, but it ultimately became what we called it failed sales development program. Mm. And working for another company right off the bat afterwards that's not listed on there uh, also had a failed sales development program. So here you have is this Asian kid who's just came from the block, who grew up in retail sales, didn't really have much in life, but he always had grit, passion, and personal growth. And I came to the realization that I had a turning point in life. And I almost left sales development uh, until I made this one post one day. I was working God, as retail back at Target. <laughs> so here you have this guy with an undergrad degree that was working at corporate jobs, trying to make ends meet, working at Target. And I made a post, uh, just making a post, and I was in the tech section selling cell phones. And um, David Delaney hit me up. And shout out to you, David Delaney. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Believe it or not, he was a turning point that made me to who I am today in terms of uh, top of funnel and uh, excellence in terms of the execution. Um, I and for, was the, able... for the listeners out there, David Delaney, past guest on the Enterprise Sales Development Podcast, CEO of Tenbound, one of the leading sales development consultancies, frankly, in the world. So David Delaney, great guy. Round of applause to him. Round of applause <laughs> to him. Yeah, no, and Eric, you know, I... Uh, so I joined David Delaney and everything started to unfold for me. And I started gaining traction. I was able to figure out how things work. Um, I was an account executive research sales person there uh, where we did sales development, coaching and trading and packages. But I was also their uh, head blogger where I was doing countless of interviews of uh, SDR leaders, such as Ralph Barcy from Trade.io, Lawrence Roffer from Segment, Rahu Wadwa located in India, just to name a few. And I was doing the outbound function to do this all in one. So it's wearing multiple hats. And I was able to have a keen eye and take a step back and go, hold on now. This is the leading industry best practices. And we all know what that is takes today. It's you need a sales engagement platform. You need a data lead enrichment, a target audience. You drive a story compelling storytelling in a short, sweet manner where it sparks curiosity to the point where you deserve to earn the right. And for you to be able to earn deserve the right is you've got to be able to show them that you know them. And mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of variety of ways. It won't always work, but it is the best approach. Relevancy with personalization and a little creativity. And you need to figure out as a rep, you need to figure out who they are and where they hang out in this digital standpoint world. Some of them prefer LinkedIn, some of them prefer calls, some Twitter, but it's your job to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Since then, in case it helps, uh, you know, I took a lot of pivots in my life. I took a lot of failures, Eric, I, uh, but where I grew and evolved from this obsession. So <laughs> before I stop rambling here, I, all I ever wanted in life was to be in an enterprise AE at an early stage SaaS startup, you know, six figure base, six figures OTE, 200, whatever. And I became so good at 
top of the funnel side section that I became obsessed and I molded into this process where I wrote out my own podcast called the One Up Sales Development Podcast. I started mm-hmm. just interviewing individuals, just trying to gain best practices from them. It led me to roll out SDU as well, known as Sales Dev Unite. Originally, it was the first uh, online online go to market community, 100% focused on top of the funnel. That was MSP inspired. Um, and that's, I'm actually going to be retiring that community shortly, so I'm happy to proud of that too, which I'll share in a few moments. But it was pre-COVID, and we had members in there such as Jared Robbins from you know Rev Genius, and we also had Michael Galliano from SDR Nation. And uh, when you become kind of like the smartest person in the room when it comes to executing the top of the funnel, um, as much as you you, you love and you create it, you gotta you gotta take a step back and. Uh, that's, that's the reason I'm retiring that community. <laughs> Did yeah. you run out of topics? No, no, I didn't. Uh, I just <laughs> came to the realization that I hit the cap. And um, to go d- a little bit deeper, uh, I became so good at what I do in terms of top funnel prospecting. I can lead gen for basically anything and anyone. And mm-hmm. I'll go into much details. Um, the way I was able to do this was a purchase a domain salesdebunite.com which is $12 a year when you have your own domain you can build out your own web pages uh you can do it through templates with wix or squarespace so i started doing that then i started becoming hearing this buzzword of copywriting so what is copywriting it's being able to write something that when the readers read it they can touch it they can feel it that you're talking to them and not through them and I just became obsessed. I started building out my own tech stack and I started rolling out a YouTube channel called SDR TV where I was doing uh, create, uh, tech stack reviews for sales engagement platforms such as you know, Persist IQ, Apollo.io, Reply.io, articles. And it's just, when you have your own domain, you can build your own tech stack link to it because you have your own personal work email. And when you have this process in place, you know how to execute accordingly, uh, you can basically prospect for anything. Yeah. Um, and not to go into much far details there, but I generated anything from even uh, warranty exchanges to when I was on unemployment back in like 2021, I, uh, it was backed up for like three, four, five, six months before you can get any uh, additional benefits. I skipped the line by running a campaign off there and they had unemployment calling me. And uh, when I got that, I was like, man, the opportunity is led us for the G Legion here. But um, yeah, I just stopped it. I feel like I'm rambling. Well, you, you've also um, led sales development or business development teams as well, right? I did. Yeah. And I want to take this time to say thank you for the individual that uh, was, he was like the icing on the cake for me. Um, his name is Nico Hughes, uh, SVP and founder of Better Growth, a BDB software consulting agency for startups and software companies. He brought me on initially as a director of sales and acquisition um, to help to do do lead gen as a service for the company itself for the clients that we bring on and to help train and coach the team that uh, one of it, who's a BDR manager today, I believe by the name of Mallory O'Brien. And he was able to show me best practices in terms of how to build a list, how to enrich it, and just the entire workflow in terms of um, the execution and uh, just throw it out there. In case it helps, um, my experience over at Tenbound was going to like college for sales development. You know, I learned what to do and the why behind it. And Better Growth was the trade school for sales development. It shows me how to do it. And I was able to look back with keen eyes, Eric, and I realized exactly why the two companies that I worked for had a failed sales development program. Their messaging was off. We didn't even have a sales engagement platform. It was just basic table stake stuff that you know better than anyone else. <laughs> well, messaging and tech stack are two things that if you don't get those two right, it's hard to get anything else right, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And you know what's funny? So it's our job as sales development professionals to build something that is repeatable and scalable. Yeah. Right? We have a tech stack here, and uh, this is why the book was rolling up, Predictable Revenue. Um, and to, I, I gotta love irony. And to be successful in a role, 
you need to have a tech stack that's repeatable and scalable, but you also need to coach and train the individuals on the front lines to be repeatable and scalable. Yep. So they need to have a set process in place in the daily go and a weekly go, monthly, uh, et cetera. Boy, truer words have never been spoken right there. I think that, you know, training and coaching are kind of like the, the real <clears throat> secrets. They're not a yeah. secret at all of success. I'm curious, what do you think are the biggest takeaways that, that you learned from kind of early career failure? Yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, and thank you again for bringing me on. This is actually something that I had recent to that I had to pull aside that in life, all I ever wanted to be was a made AE in a SaaS company startup. I came to the realization recently that I've been so focused on top of the phone because I became good and great at it that I started helping other individuals 100% cost-free, coaching them, training them, code costs, all that stuff, writing creative outreach campaigns, giving it all away that <laughs> I forgot to focus on my original dream. So this is why I'm saying I'm in the transitional stage as we speak. And I kind of feel like, did I waste the past four years? You know, I could have just joined the software company be that ordinary SDR and AE and just move up the ranks and just stick from there because I realized that if you look at my resume, it's uh, it, it's been around, right? It's, yeah. I did things where others wouldn't normally do. Um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, and it's my mistake. N never, never assume something despite on your data analysis. Um, the most previous company I worked for a Series B, uh, I won't name it for purposes here, but we served to the facility maintenance side. Uh, I actually had a few other offers for like an account manager role at the time before I accepted the role, but I, I saw it and I, I knew that previous SDR manager that I, <laughs> that I wrote a blog for at 10 bound, Nick Truman, shout out to you, Mr. Truman. Uh, he's an SDR leader too as well. And he's like, Hey, you know, we, we really need some help with the outbound motion. Everyone's converting leads through PLG and inbounds. You know, there's no really true real outbound success there. So I took a step back and the way I saw it was an opportunity to come in an early stage startup. Uh, so here you have Jax, inside sales consultant guy, knows how things work. He run campaign off grids, he knows how things work. And he was able to come in, uh, quote unquote, as an enterprise VDR, but really an outbound strategist. And I saw it as an opportunity to pick a little bit here and just interview everyone, customer success, who buys, why did we renew, sales, who's our top clients, uh, what do we serve best, what are we currently going through, and then partnering up with marketing together. And um, the reason I'm sharing this story was able to work hand in hand uh, with enablement and also with the marketing professional there by the name of Cameron. And I just told him, hey, look, who's writing the campaign? He's like, that's me. I was like, hey, man, can we chat? It's like, look, marketing, I love what you guys do. You guys are great copywriters. But in the sales development world, when it comes to this execution line, it needs to be shorter. And we can't always talk about us. It's got to <laughs> be them. So I started spreading over my own campaigns and just getting for his approval. Hey, here's where I'm coming from the side of the field. Here's where I'm breaking up. What are your thoughts? So every campaign that we attacked and did together was a coordinated attack. And we found a lot of success through that. Um, for instance, one of the one I made was a nickname beta campaign. Uh, we booked 12 outbounds within the two weeks from that in December. So that, that was a huge success to us. Well, but more to come, more to share. Well, I love that. I love the, the place that you started, which was, hey, I want to learn why people are buying right now. Why, why is this interesting? What problem are we solving? Um, I imagine that went right back into the messaging right off the top of why care. Yep, absolutely. And um, it's funny because my... I didn't do it alone. Uh, I, where I'm at today, you know, I'm really good with top of funnel. It's like, I'm exceptional at it. I'm not gonna say I'm the best, but when it comes to prospecting and creating this creative outreach campaign, I'm gonna say I'm one of the best, probably even one of the greats. I know it's kind of conceited, but it was also, is thanks to one of your good friend, um, Chris Ordolano. Yep. He told me, this is how you're gonna be successful. And this goes out to all the SDR and BDR who's listening to and when you're new. And, but you have to be careful. When you're new, you're new. Your first 30 days is to be accepted and 
they even like dating. If we just come on board, these wave guns in the air, it's not going to work really well. You need to introduce yourself and lay low and slowly earn the right, but plant the seed. And the way I did that was, hey, I'll just slack individuals. Hey, this is Jack's new hire here. Just want to reach out, personally introduce myself. Would be a blessing and honor to learn a bit more about you one day in the upcoming weeks after ramp. And you're just slowly planting the seed. And then after that 30 days, you go to the 15, you set an agenda. Hey, customer success, this is what I'm looking to get. Learn, want to learn a little bit more about you. And here's what I'm hoping to get out this conversation. And then you document, document, document. After you document the process, you put it into a mind map. I like mind mapping. Like you go through Miro, M-I-R-O.com. Mm -hmm. You might map that out and then you document the process and then you share it with the leaders. Um, until then there, this just starts creating a parallel line in terms of uh, execution. So uh, that's, that's the way to do it too as well. Are you a big proponent of, um, it sounds like that campaign kind of kicked off on LinkedIn. Um, I'm guessing probably filtered through other channels. Um, yeah. Are you talking well? about marketing? Well, I mean, what you described actually sounded a lot like a nurture campaign that bled into an outbound campaign. It did. It did. Yeah. Uh, another great fact, too, is being able to extract the buyer's journey from the marketing standpoint mm -hmm. and sharing that with the team so that we can coordinate our outreach together. Um, for instance, one thing I did was reaching out to our CMO and just like, hey, can you help us better understand when we're doing these type of outreaches for the marketing campaign, whether it's the nurturing, uh, what does that look like? Is it through LinkedIn? Is it through email? What does the part out look like? And more importantly, what's the messaging? So we can go ahead and create the campaign that's tailored to it um, because yeah. not, nothing's worse than like you coming in as an inbound and then they just pitch you with something else that's totally irrelevant to what you initially signed in for. Well, I would argue that inbound and outbound are best when they work together. <laughs> yeah. You know, pulling in the same direction, like on the same page. Yep. 100%. So tell me a little bit more about how you blend inbound strategies with some of your outbound and top of the funnel. Yeah. So it's the inbound depends where, if it's through POG or not. Mm -hmm. if you're signing in through the POG, your best bet is to guide. And if it's through the marketing campaign, it's best to look past the uh, marketing campaign and look at the previous messages that was sent. This is typically dotted into your uh, the CRM, whether you're using Salesforce or whatever that may be. And all you got to do is just take a couple of research off that. Just take a look at what, what was told, what was said. And then you would just align your outbounding messaging accordingly. Um, for instance, let's say you, we got an inbound through a marketing landing white page and it's saying to specific X, Y, and Z. I'll just reach out, hey, thanks for signing up. Notice you're signing up for X, Y, and Z. I'm curious, what was the reason for that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, <sighs> sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> what what, what would you like to hear? Just hit you with that. Well, it's funny, like you were saying, hey, what's the reason? I always find that one of the best strategies that you can use post outbound or discovery calls, or as a reason, if you happen to know something about an intent signal is to dig into that history. You know, like, especially with inbound leads, what made you sign up? What made you, you know, like take a free trial? What made you like go in this direction? Frankly, outbound fronted meetings, what made you take this meeting? Those types of questions really unlock the buyer psychology and, and get to what I like to call the set point, which is, hey, where is this potential sales cycle going to go? Because I need to learn, I need to dig into your status quo, your current approach, your current gaps, problems, issues, hopes, desires, dreams, before I can sell you anything. Yes. <laughs> this is... Uh... This is why it's so challenging for, you know, reps to really become exceptional at what they do. And it really depends how long they stay, decide to stay in a row. Um, oftentimes when they come in, they really want to just, they're focused on the next step in their yeah. the next step, the next step. Once I do this, I don't want to do this again. And 
you know, that really is the wrong mindset. And my mentor, Chris Orlando, shared this with, uh, and I wrote a blog about it too. I really honestly believe, and it just marries to what you just said, is to become exceptional, you need to understand these three things. Uh, number one is no, domain knowledge, being able to speak their lingo. So because when you solve a problem, you're an industry expert. But if you go dive deeper and uncover and uh, share a few things that they would never knew or believe would po be possible, then you're, in, uh, then you're a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. um, next is business acumen. And this is where it comes into why you should invest in such a product or service. And what you just mentioned too was the buyer's journey. You need yeah. to know and understand the buyer's journey. Are there in exploration phase? This is a project phase. What's the reason for them signing up here? And I learned uh, for a good deep discovery on a call from uh, Richard Harrison to, through his lead selling. Um, and this is exactly why we have SDR and BDRs for them to filter it out and kind of score the lead. And even if it makes sense to enter a sales pipeline, like, hey, you know, Eric, uh, based on a conversation today, what makes it you know, what makes solving this problem more important than let's say solving six months ago? Yeah. Help me understand. When, when, when is, when, when is there a dead end? Uh, is there a time frame where would you like to go live? Yeah. Well, just out of curiosity, what happens if we can't go live at that time? And all you got to do is just sit back, be calm and collective and just throw a few words out there. Just have them start talking. Um, because, you know, people like to talk a lot about themselves. And when you're able to sit back and just analyze the situation, you can see it from a perspective of who they are, where they're coming from. And you can kind of read the room. And um, by then, as a sales professional yourself, you should be able to tell what a good uh, nine out of 10 certainty that it would it make sense to push this to the AE or not. Because, of course, AE's time are very, very valuable. Yeah, I want to get to your number three, but you hit on a topic that's maybe one of my favorites. So domain knowledge, business acumen, what's your third? Buyer's journey. Understanding buyer's journey. where you're at in the buyer's journey. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the things that I've often found throughout my career is a great reason for moving forward or doing anything for a prospect, and this is kind of a Jedi mind trick in some respects, is a forward forcing function. Because you told me. So when you're listening, when you're taking it all in, when you're sitting back, like you just um, envisioned, you're, you're gaining all of the, <laughs> the ammo um, for what might move that conversation forward. Hey, because you told me you guys are you know, experiencing a gap in your pipeline right now, I think we should explore this. <laughs> I think we should move forward, right? Because you told me. And ultimately that's a great, like, it's very natural too. It's very easy to say yes to. And, you know, I, ideally it, it also um, validates the person talking because it means the other person listened because they can repeat back <laughs> what they heard. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's funny. You mentioned that I, uh, starting back in retail sales, we learned an objection handling by known as the arm statement, um, in terms of ARM is acknowledge, respond and move forward. Uh, doesn't always work because we're in a B2B sense point, but always repeating it back and just acknowledging, uh, it's always a great way too. So, uh, <laughs> quote unquote, Eric, just to confirm, <laughs> what we're hearing is that you're having pipeline generation, you have a team in place, but they're not currently hitting, trending to go. Does that sound about right? Things like that. It's great actually, because Although it sounds to some people, and I think a lot of new people in their career, they love to over talk situations, but actually validating what a person says, what they think, what they've expressed to you is oftentimes the number one way to demonstrate back to them that you value their time. Absolutely. Yes. Eric, <clears throat> if it's okay. Um, there's one thing I'd like to share with the audience here for some insights, uh, strategy in terms of uh, the frontline execution. Would that be all right? Of course. So this goes out to all the SDR and BDRs right now that are listening, that is prospecting into mid-market and large enterprise deals. I'm going to give you the winning formula 
whether you're using sales loft or outreach. This one's going to be specifically for sales loft. And this is the bottoms up approach in terms of what I call the link chart analysis. And before we get started, um, I like to give a last final shout out for this individual. His name is Trong Nguyen. I first heard of Trong Nguyen. He was a Microsoft global account manager who was pushing six, seven figure deals. I heard his story on uh, Scott Ingram's the sales success story back in 2018, 2019. And it's just the background he came from really originated with me. And uh, he said what he would do. So pushing these large size deals, he would come on site and he would triangulate data from the bottom up. He would go out and interview anybody and anyone. He would try to figure out what they do, what are a few pain points that are currently coming up. And then he would triangulate that day up to the C-suite. So by the time he gets to the C-suite, uh, he basically just calls them out on what's wrong. And <laughs> oftentimes when that happens, they question them and they investigate and they find out it's true and they have his utmost respect and then they work with them. So this inspired me that here's this Asian kid, Jax. It's just like strong, grew up poor Asian American, whatever. And I asked myself, how can I implement this on a frontline level standpoint? And being the, in the enterprise BDR role that I found much success with by taking this role itself. So let's say we're reaching out to an executive VP. The way we do that is we want to go ahead and go about one or two levels down more. Typically for whatever you're serving or trying to solve, these are the kind of individuals that would use it from a front end standpoint. Um, and I'll give an example. Let's say if we're doing lead gen as a service, uh, you know, you want to reach a level down or two, you reach out to the SDR and BDRs. And you want to take this approach by putting on like a detective hat. And it's a, it's a market research map. You're just gathering information, gathering information. So for you who are listening to uh, individuals right now, I'll give it to you. Um, in Sales Loft, uh, it's three campaigns. It's a high touch campaign and a low touch campaign. The high touch are decision makers. The low touch are the people that we believe have some sort of influence, uh, which are the people that we're doing the market research on. And we have is a pending campaign, which I like to call it insights gathered. So we're at sales always sticking here. And for the low touch, when you're sending out that big email, make sure it's value driven and it's kind of like a deposit. We, you know, deposits, Eric, where you just, dropping off value where you're just not going for an ask. Yep. You could send that one-off emails off too. What you can do is you have a second screen up, you treat the trigger when they open the email, you treat the trigger as if it's an inbound lead. You hold control on your keyboard, you hold up with the task, you're just pushing it all up. And all these people that comes up that you just sent that one-off email to, double tap them, you know, double tap them. And uh, that's how you can increase your uh, connect rate to call ratio. Um, yeah. Phone, email, same day, double tap. Yep. And the reason I'm sharing this is that taking this market research approach, I've always been like, hey, this is Jax with a uh, company X calling here. Thanks for taking my call. And you're expecting me. You have a quick moment. How are you using one, two, and three? Tell me more. And ultimately, they'll tell you something like, oh, this is great. I've heard of you. I never heard of you. But you know what? Um, I'm not the right person to speak to. Fantastic. This is exactly why I'm calling you. Uh, the reason I'm reaching out is I'm actually looking to speak with your manager and I believe what we can bring to the table will help you in terms of X. And I'd love you to be involved. Would you be open to that? And they ultimately would say yes. And what we're doing now is we're multi-threading early on for an internal champion or Fox. Yep. So that, so what happens next is that we, once we gather about two or three insights gathered, we're now using he said, she said. And then when we reach out to their exec, um, cold calling through email, whatever, uh, it's like, hey, this is Jax with company X calling. Thanks for taking my call. And you weren't expecting me. I was speaking with a few of your colleagues and they shared some very valuable insights I believe you would find interesting. Do you have a quick moment? Hey, look, I was spoken to X, Y, Z. This is what he's talking about. I'm curious, what are you looking to solve this today? Has this topic been tossed around? Tell me more. If not, why is it? Is there a gap here? What's going on? And uh, yeah, that's link chart analysis for you. So high touch, low touch, insights gathered. And um, 
that's how it enables to uh, book McDonald's USA and uh, Cup It's Minerals and all the other large enterprise deals too as well. So, uh, you know, it's funny because yeah. what you're suggesting is, I think the way, the reason a lot of uh, STR shy away from that is A, you have to have a little bit of a strategy, a little bit of a vision, a little bit of a long-term delayed gratification type of mode to even adopt that strategy, don't you? Yes, and um, this isn't this isn't for like the new individuals. This is more for like the tenured reps. Uh, yeah. For those who are booking large enterprise, where it takes time to reel it in, but when you reel it in, it is a fat opportunity. Whether it closes or not, it is huge. And uh, but yes, answering your question, it that I do not recommend this for the new person. But you know, take it with <laughs> a grain of salt. Prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, the other thing that, that's cool about that strategy, in my opinion, is you're actually going to a less saturated audience. The, the audience that a lot of SDRs, BDRs, or people that set you know targeting campaigns, they always just want to go after the C-suite. They want to start at the top. They want to work their way down. Um, and the truth of the matter is, is that when you go that route, everything's working against you everything yep 100 percent. you know it's um it's funny that you mentioned that because we live in a world now where mediocrity is often rewarded uh people which just want things overnight yeah Come in i'm an sdr i'm going to be an a in the next six months or so and hitting straight to the decision maker just throwing stuff out asking for time it's all about me 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 i don't care about you etc and um but yeah you're absolutely right you you know you want to you got to treat this like a sport. You got to trust the process, uh, definitely respect the chain of command and never go against anybody. But if something's not currently working out for you, you got to try something new and ask for help. Hey, Eric, you know, I've been doing X, Y, and Z. Like you told me, here's how we're currently measuring it. I'm not currently seeing the success that we're looking for. Um, would it be right if we try something else and, you know, work together and uh, be accountable? Um, own up to your stuff and like I'll tell you like I made a lot of mistakes in my life Eric like who you see today I failed a, out of all the majority of the campaigns I ran in my entire life it's got countless of campaigns it's like hundreds to the thousands 80 percent of them were failures and from the last 20 percent it's all huge in success so trust yourself work hard treat it like a sport never give up respect the chain of command and work as a team, not as an individual, because it's one team, one dream, and uh, no, the, one, the, the lone wolf never wins, especially not in this world, I know. Well, I understand that you're now up in the Northwest, but um, I, I hear a lot of California mindset in exactly what you just said, which is that, and this isn't true of the majority of the world, but in California, failure is a badge of honor. Failure means that you, you've learned something. Failure means that you can actually take a shot and you don't always make it, but you can learn from it. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Yes. And Eric, I'll tell you, it's funny because I'm actually originally from Orange County, um, Garden Girl specific. And I always see, and you know, it's uh, as you get older, you tend to realize that all the bads and the miseries that you tend to go over or went through later on becomes a blessing in disguise. And even though at that time it was losing, when you become successful at that is when you're able to turn it around and make it become a learning. So you turn that losing into learning and then you push forward, never give up, stay in a parallel lane and um, like a pawn in chess, always move forward and attack, attack, attack. Because uh, a lot of SDRs out there that I, know personally too and you may ran to them as well where they just didn't find a success they were looking for and that was it they made a career change they made a career change i like that analogy like a pawn in chess right heading towards that back wall and maybe you become a queen or <laughs> yeah. a, di a different uh, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like because that's the name of the game isn't it it is never give up never give up go down swinging and you know if there's a if there's another advice i can give to new reps is be bold be bold and take bold bets but not company bets 
Um, I'll give you an example. Jeff Bezos uh, said this better than anybody else. Uh, I took many risks in life. Like I became so good at top of the funnel. I wrote out my old lead gen as a service. I tried recruiting. I tried to do like an SDU uh, academy where I help people break into tech without breaking the bank. Um, thank God that ISA is being broken now. So, you know, that's to see that. But, you know, I just, I was everywhere in the place. And, uh, you know, the mistake that I made was I took a company bet where it means if you do something and then you failed, it will basically kind of destroy you. Uh, but you want to be able to take bets where it will hurt you, but it wouldn't destroy you. And what I mean by that is you pass three lead gen of service, sales recruiting and stuff. Um, it all failed because I, it's embarrassing, but I didn't have runway. I didn't have the runway. I had like five, yeah. six grand saved up and it just depleted. And uh, I quickly realized that sometimes in life, you can't just do it alone. There's nothing wrong with helping a company build something. It's okay. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I'm giving this advice now, but sometimes I, I too need to take my own advice on that. And I found that kind of, kind of cast, catastrophic sometimes. In that <laughs> well, but you, here you are, you're still standing and uh, still, you know, doing a ton of stuff in the sales development space, which is, you know, frankly, the reason that I wanted to have you on, because I think these are hard won lessons, right? Like these are kind of even knocking out and, and talking about the strategic elements of a given campaign are rare skills. Oh, thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. And happy birthday to you. Oh, geez. Right? It's your birthday today. Yeah, <laughs> indeed it is. Indeed it is. You know, the um, podcast re meets real world. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but uh, to piggyback off that, um, if it's all right, what I mean by when you take bold bets as an SDR, BDR, if you believe the messaging is too long, it's not value driven enough, do it and cut it. If they tell you send videos not to send you, do it. You know, if they tell you not to say pitch a certain way, do it. If it's, you're not getting, if you're not getting the success you need, do it. You 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 may get in trouble for it, but it won't destroy you. And if it's not working, then you gotta try something else. And uh, that's what I meant by um, taking bold bets, but not company bets. Well, you know, it's funny. I think that the just do it mantra is actually a a really thoughtful one because ultimately, what you're talking about, if you feel like something isn't serving you. You have to have a hypothesis around why change, why, why cut it, why make it different, don't you? Yeah, you, you got to take a step back and just reflect a little bit. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try something new, uh, but then again, you got to respect the upper chain of command. Don't go under looping without them, and then don't go out and find some try something new without them knowing and you found success and then all of a sudden you went to a team meeting, you shared with the entire team and your upper management didn't know about that. Don't do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep them in the loop. But you know, I will say this, and I think that this is a pretty fair statement having worked with hundreds, well, closer to thousands of companies, especially around lead generation. Um, experimentation should be the, the rule and not the exception. Yes. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. And the reason I say this is because, and I'll take it with a grain of salt, um, this goes out to other like SDR leaders out there, not all of them, right? Because when it comes to the lead gen space, we all heard of what works today may not work tomorrow. Yep. So in able to be successful at it, you gotta be a practitioner. No one cares about what you used to do. What are you doing today that works? Yeah. Um, for instance, video used to work a lot back then and now it's dying out a little bit. And then you're trying this a little bit here, uh, you know, sending them gifts. It's always a good way to break through the noise. Like as a strategist, I'm constantly thinking of new ways. And I, I honestly believe, I honestly believe, not right now, but I honestly believe in the near future, people will be closing deals through like TikTok. There's yeah. going to be like some sort of metaverse where they just come in and prospect you in front in the metaverse. And, you know, you know where just, I'm seeing that a lot right now is in Slack communities. Yep. It's keeping them in the loop, staying in the Slack to communicate and yeah. just leveraging it's where they're at in a digital standpoint and just being presence. Um, and I find that, you know, just a blessing and a curse for me because uh, again, 
all I ever wanted to be was Enterprise A, and here I am just looping everywhere. So, yeah, that's a uh, story of my life. Right. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Well, listen, we've, we've gotten some pretty uh, decent golden nuggets here off of a, a conversation that, wow, I, I can't even believe um, <laughs> time has <laughs> time has uh, sped on by. Yeah. Jax, tell the the listeners where they can get in touch with you and any of the current projects that you'd love to turn people on to um, that you're a part of. Yeah, you can reach me out on through LinkedIn, uh, JT Lil, that's J-T-L-I-E-U, or just hit up my blog page at www.salesdevunite.com. There you see the content page on the YouTube channel and the One Up Sales Development podcast. Uh, but for some projects that I'm currently working on right now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's just seeking on my next role. Um, just strategize a few big, uh, a little bit. I just got to take a step back and take a break. I been running at 120 mile plus per hours and uh, yeah, current projects right now. Well, revamping the podcast in case you hear it now, it'll be a one up revenue podcast. Originally the which one was made by SDR for SDRs. Now it's for cross-functional sales teams, whether we're adding net new logos, expanding revenue from our sold base or renewing existing accounts. Um, but if you found anything helpful and if there's everything I can do to help, please feel free to reach out. More than happy. And uh, Eric, thank you for having me on board today. And uh, I really appreciate your time and happy birthday. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jax. This was great. Yeah. Appreciate it.